Hi students, welcome to Year 10 Science and the space component of the physics topic. This is video number six in the space section and just a little bit of information about observing space. So what we're going to be talking about is telescopes and there's two types of telescopes that we're going to be talking about, optical and radio. Both of these telescopes rely on detecting components of the electromagnetic spectrum and first of all we're going to have a look at the refractor telescope. So the refractor is a type of optical telescope. So it's working in the light part of the electromagnetic spectrum. And what it does is it uses a lens which is going to, let me just change the color here. So a lens which is going to take the light that comes in and refract it so that it meets at a particular focal point. And that focal point is going to be obviously um, hopefully the point where you're able to look in. So if this is your eye looking in here, uh, you can see the image uh, being projected right onto the base. So this would be kind of down in this region here. Refracting telescopes were the first types of telescopes that were used. They date back to the um, 17th century, early 17th century, and that's the time of Galileo. Now, Galileo is often credited with the invention of the refractor telescope. He certainly developed one, uh, developed a good one, and he used that one um, for some of the um, discoveries that he made, including things like the moons of Jupiter. Um, but he wasn't the first to develop this. He did promote his uh, invention, his discovery, or his modifications, if you like, um, to the leading council at the time. And so often you do find that the credit has gone to him. But there were a couple of other um, scientists and lens makers who were looking at refractors before Galileo. The other type of optical telescope that we can quickly look at is the reflector telescope or reflectors. This is another optical telescope, but this time, instead of using lenses, it used mirrors. The advantage of the mirror is that it meant that you, one of the problems with refractors was the lenses would start to collapse a little bit under their weight when they got too large. So that means that they would start to create uh, an aberrant image. The image would start to distort, kind of like looking at something that's constantly out of focus. So what um, I guess telescope makers found was that if a uh, mirror could be set in and the light that came in reached that mirror and then was bounced back to a, a focal point, um, and then often what we would have is another mirror that would angle that through to an observer, which would be, uh, in this case, the little section that you can kind of not quite see uh, on this, but it's just it's just here. Um, so you can sight, uh, you can sight by looking here, which is kind of giving you a bit of an idea of where you're looking at. Um, but then to look at the image uh, magnified, then this is the place you would be looking at right here. Reflectors um, allowed for much bigger diameter lenses and therefore were able to um, detect objects that were further away than what could be detected with refractors. Most of the major telescopes in astronomy are now reflector telescopes because they have that property of being able to be much larger in terms of their mirrors um, and therefore are able to resolve images that are further away. Sometimes other optical elements are used to improve the image quality or place the image in a mechanically advantageous position. Um, so again, you, you're trying to, you don't want to put your head at the front here to try and look at an image because you're going to be blocking all the light that's coming through. So by being able to use a little mirror to bounce the uh, light back out at an angle, you can look in the side of the telescope and still be able to see the image. Both of these two types of telescopes are optical telescopes, and so they operate in the visible component of the electromagnetic spectrum. But radio telescopes are a different type of telescope. They operate in the um, radio wave component of the electromagnetic spectrum, which is much lower energy and longer waves. These are directional radio telescopes. If you've had a look at the movie The Dish, then you'll know they need to keep being moved. And if they don't move and track the object, such as what they were doing with the Apollo 11, then they lose it. They can't find it again. Well, for the sake of the movie and for the sake of history, they did. 
but um, this becomes a problem with the radio telescope. It has to keep being pointed in the right direction, and so therefore this huge dish has to keep has to be maneuverable. It has to move up and down and also around in 360 degrees. Uh, in order for it to be able to change its direction and point at different parts of the sky at different times. The other thing that's important to note that's different between the optical telescopes and the radio telescopes is that they, their parabolic dish is actually acting, I guess, in a similar way to the reflector in that it's bouncing each of the images back to a focal point, which is where all the magic happens. That's where uh, the Radio waves are detected, then converted into uh, computer images. These really large parabolic dishes can be used just on their own, as it is in parks, or uh, as part of an array. This is a technique called interferometry, where a number of different telescopes can be set up in a line or in a group, and that gives us a bit more information about particular parts of the sky. Unlike optical telescopes, which tend to be located very high, so on mountaintops to get through layers of the atmosphere and away from the ambient light that tends to be around them, um, radio telescopes tend to be located more in, uh, on the flat plains or in valleys because their bigger problem is electromagnetic radiation that's coming from much closer sources. We know that we have radio and television waves that are um, spreading around. They can interfere with the image. We've also got a lot of microwave radiation that's coming from mobile phones and such devices uh, that can also interfere with the operation. So most of the time you'll find these radio telescopes are located in the middle of nowhere, as it is, <laughs> no offence parks, um, uh, but well away from major cities and also um, in areas where the image is much clearer and cleaner and um, much more readily available to um, be resolved into a nice clear image. These are just a couple of the ways that we use to gather information or gather data from the universe and how we've made a number of very important discoveries uh, about the features and the components of the universe over time. So optical and radio telescopes, a couple of these devices that help us to explore space. Thanks for watching.